Hi Vinyl community, it's Michael again. Uh, welcome back to Near Wild Heaven. Um, this video is just going to be uh, going to do catch up on my latest finds. Uh, so I'm just going to jump right into it. And the first one up is Nirvana Bleach, their first album. This is a 2021 reissue, uh, remastered. Sounds really good. Um, I had a copy of this. It was a German pressing from 1992, and it was kind of beat, so I thought I'd pick this up. But uh, there's the inner sleeve. But, um, yeah, just pretty good stuff. Uh, custom label there. Pretty cool. Um, everybody knows this album. If you're a Nirvana fan, you probably have this. But, um, uh, really good. Nirvana Bleach. Up next, the Heartbreakers. Live at Max's Kansas City. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is from, uh, 1979. Um, this is a reunion gig that Johnny and the rest of the band did. Jerry Nolan's not on this. He had quit the band uh, previously, and when they wanted to do this reissue, he didn't want any part of it. So they got this guy, Ty Sticks, to, yeah, great name, um, to uh, take his place. But it's a good recording. It was a pretty good gig. Um, if you like Heartbreakers, if you like Johnny Sunders and New York Dolls and stuff like that, uh, Punk, this is a great punk album. So, if you want to check this out if you haven't heard it, Heartbreakers Live at Max Kansas City. Up next, this is Roy Wood, Boulders. This is his first solo album. Um... I believe it's from 1971. Uh, oh, 1973. I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's pretty good. Um, if you like to move an early electric light orchestra, um, this is pretty good. Uh, it's on the Harvest label. It's an import of uh, British pressing. Um, yeah, it's good. Um, Roy Wood was, uh, he was the main songwriter in The Move, and he wrote a lot of great, uh, psych pop classics, and just, he's changing his sound in his solo career a little bit, he's just mixing it up with different influences, but it's generally, it's a pretty good album, it's not the greatest album I ever heard, but it's a good album, I enjoy it. The Roy Wood Boulders. I think I showed the inside of it. There you go. But if you like the move and uh, Electric Light Orchestra, you might want to check this one out. It's pretty good. Up next, this is Savoy Brown Looking In. This is uh, from 1960. 70, ooh, I don't know, I don't know, it's probably early 70s, 72, 73 maybe, but really good British blues rock, great band, Savoy Brown, I like early, all their early albums, they're really good, if you like uh, British blues rock, you know, like early Fleetwood Mac, uh, the Groundhogs, uh, stuff like that. Chicken Shack is another one, but really good. You might want to check this one out. The Savoy Brown Looking In. And up next, we got, uh, this is Can Soundtracks. I believe this is their second album. This is the first one to uh, feature Demo Suzuki uh, as a singer. 
Um, but great stuff. Kraut rock, it's spacey, sometimes psychedelic. Um, Can is a great uh, uh, band to get into if you like kraut rock, prog rock, psych rock. There are all kinds of stuff. If you want to check them out, this would be a good place to start. The Can soundtrack. This is, by the way, this is a 2020. 21 reissue on Spoon Records. Uh, sounds excellent. It sounds really, really good. But uh, yeah, Can is is a great album. Great band. I really like them a lot. I'm trying to get everything they got. So up next, this is the Cult Sonic Temple. Um, this is a follow-up to their uh, Electric album. This is from 1989. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, still in the hard rock mode. Uh, not too much in the way of ballads, but that's fine with me. I'd rather hear the hard stuff. It's on Sire Records. Uh, really good. If you like the call, if you like Electric, their album Electric, um, you'd probably like this one. So if you don't already know about this one, and a lot of people do because it's, uh, I've seen other people show this album. I can't get this in there. There we go. Alright. Yeah, this is, it's a good album. Good listen. Be like the hard rock sound that they were doing at this time. So, uh, the Cult Sonic Temple. <coughs> Up next, I've seen several people show this album, and I've been thinking about getting it for a long time. I finally jumped on it, and that's May Blitz. This is their first album. This is great. This is, uh, a 2018 reissue on a Polish label called Recoil um, who also uh, they reissued a Leafhound Grower of Mushrooms album which is also good and that it's kinda in this this is kinda in the same vein as the Leafhound a little bit of Zeppelin nice 70s early 70s hard rock uh, a lot like I said a lot of people have shown this uh, it's it's a good album. It's really worth having and I highly recommend it. If you're into 70s hard rock, you might want to check this one out. Uh, it's May Blitz, their first album. Up next, this is The Replacements. Sorry, Ma, I forgot to take out the trash. It's their first album. This, this one, they were more like hardcore punk um, but soon after Paul Westerberg started writing more conventional type songs um, I really prefer his uh, their songs from the the albums that came after this this is a good album I like it but I really like the other albums better when Paul Westerberg's songwriting was getting more uh, better, I guess. But this is a 2020 reissue, I think. And it's on, uh, it's Rhino, but it's on Twin Tone, the original label that these albums came out on. But sounds good as usual. Um, I don't know what more to say about it. It's it's just a good album. If you like hardcore punk rock, like I said, I like his, uh, their uh, other stuff better. Their other albums better than this, but it's still pretty good. And if you notice up here, it says file under power trash yeah power trash so yeah a lot of people probably have this album good album to have for your replacements collection 
There you go. Alright, a couple more here. This one is Sussex by Bent Wind. This is really good. Really good psych. This is a band from uh, Canada. Um, the album, I think, originally came out in like 1970. It was a private press. There was only like maybe 500 copies made originally. But it's been reissued many times. Um, this is a pretty good issue. Uh, it's really good psych. This hard and heavy, guitar heavy psych. And that's right up my alley. And I'm sure it's up a lot of other people's alleys too. But um, yeah, just great album. Really good uh, addition to my psych collection. And now this last one, this little story behind this one. Um, I don't normally go to Goodwill for records because around here the Goodwills and the thrift stores, they don't have anything. They have records, but they're just, you know, Jim Neighbors, Lawrence Welk, 101 Strings, stuff like that. So there's this pharmacy I go to in the shopping center, and next door to the pharmacy is a Goodwill. So I went there to pick up a prescription, and I thought, well, I'll just go in there and see if anything comes up. And, but I kind of doubt it. So I went in there. I'm flipping through the Lawrence Well, Jim Neighbors, 101 strings, and then I see this. And I almost fell on the floor when I saw this. This is The Pretty Things. This is a, a pressing from the Netherlands, like Denmark or something. Um, well, what it is is the Pretty Things album, Get the Picture, which originally came out in 1965. And this is the Dutch or Denmark or whatever, the Netherlands, this is the Netherlands issue of that album with a different cover. And I saw this and the price was only three dollars. And I, I almost passed out. And, and there's a little bit of rip there, right here on the cover. Like there was tape or something and they pulled it off and ripped the cover. But other than that, it's kind of nice looking. I love the colors and the psychedelic imagery. And the thing was, when I uh, before I bought it, I took a look at the vinyl. And you probably can't see it that well, but it's pretty scuffed up. But I cleaned it up. I don't know if I can get a scuff in there for you to see. It looks pretty clean there, but um, yeah, it's kind of scuffed. So I'm thinking, yeah, I don't know, but for three dollars I just could not leave it there. So I took it home, I cleaned it up, I played it, and it plays beautifully. There was no surface noise, or there was very little surface noise in between the tracks. But it sounds great, and I am so happy to have found this. I mean, what are the odds, you know? I never go into Goodwill, and then the one time I do, I find this. It's so good. So, that's it uh, for now. Uh, just made a quick video here. Uh, catching up on my recent finds and uh, I'll be back soon with another video so take care of VC thanks for everybody who watches and leaves comments and thanks to all the people who subscribe to me and I'll see you all later bye VC